Amen. We're going to get right to the word of the Lord tonight. Um, if you've got your Bibles, we're going to Matthew chapter 22. Beginning at verse 35. It says, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I want to talk to you for uh, just a few minutes tonight on this title, It's All in Your Head. It's All in Your Head. Amen. Let's pray one more time. Dear Lord, we love you, Jesus. God, I'm thankful tonight for your word, Lord Jesus. I'm thankful, Lord, for every uh, person that has made it up in their mind, Lord Jesus, to come out to the house of the Lord tonight, Jesus. I pray, God, that you would touch our hearts, God, anoint our hearts and our minds tonight to receive your word, Jesus. God, we just want you to have your way more than anything else tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that you would have your way in this place. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's all in your head. You ever say that to anybody? I don't know. I know it's been said to me, and it's not a good feeling. Somebody says it's all in your head. It's almost like it's not a big deal, or it's, uh, it's not that important. Oh, that's just all in your head. Um, but the fact is, is a lot of things that take place in our heads are, uh, is really, are really very important and uh, make a big difference. <clears throat> and I've been, my mind is, I guess, a little bit, which is kind of funny, ironic, uh, my mind feels a bit kind of all over the place tonight because this is uh, some things that I've been thinking about and pondering about for a long time that I want to talk about tonight. And, and I hope it uh, comes across in some sort of uh, form that you'll be able to receive it and not just a big jumble. But I will do my best. I will do my best. Uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy heart. Thou shalt love him supremely more than any other beings and things. To love him with all of your heart is to fix your affection supremely on him more strongly than anything else and to be willing to give up all that we hold dear at his command with all thy soul with all your life this means to be willing to give up the life to him uh, to devote it to all his service to live to him and to be willing to even give our life with all thy mind to submit the intellect to his will to love his law uh, the gospel more than we do the decisions of our own minds, to be willing to submit all of our faculties to his teaching and to his guidance, to devote to him all of our intellectual attainments and all the results of our intellectual effort. I want to focus on the mind tonight, that place that is completely yours. No one gets access without your say-so. And even then, how much do we really show, even our loved ones? How much does anyone really know our thoughts and the intentions, the things that run through uh, that brain of yours. How does anyone really know that? God knows tonight. And we know that he knows. But do we allow that knowledge to affect how we think? The thoughts that we allow into our mind. And how we live. Or do we choose to show uh, one thing to the outside world. But to be completely something different. Behind the scenes. When I look at uh, the world around us. I guess popular culture we will say. Specifically, if you look at, um, I like to look at books that are bestsellers, things that are, people are buying. People are spending money on, on it. Normally, it's somewhat important to them. That's kind of how our culture works. Um, if you look at things that are popular, books that are being sold, uh, TED Talks, podcasts that are very popular, things like that, you can kind of get a, a bead on things that are important to the culture at the time, I guess you could say. And You know what? As, as basic humans, we don't really change all that much. We desire to be... Uh, successful. We want meaningful connections. We want to be happy and healthy and, and entertained. And do we change as our world changes? Sure it does. You know, outside stimulus changes. That has an effect on society. We see that with social media and how that has affected people, how that's kind of uh, starting to affect generations that are coming up behind us, how it has changed our ability or the way that we communicate with one another. Uh, how we relate to one another, how we make connections, how we make friends, how we ask people out on a date. That's all changed now. 
Heaven forbid you walk up to somebody and just, no, never mind, I won't, won't get into that. That's just craziness. <laughs> <clears throat> but, and this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, uh, these attachments that we have to devices, myself included, now that, is, that is something that affects everyone, not just young people. The poor young people get uh, beat up over that, but I see plenty of adults walking around with their heads down, looking at their phones. And that's just something that we deal with as a culture today. Uh, but I see so much, if you look at the past 15, 20 years, is this notion that if you can change your thoughts, you can change your life. This is kind of an I- I idea that's been out there for a long time. And you go look at the bestsellers every year, and there's always power of positive thinking books, and how to get up early and change your life books, and how to rewire your brain for better habits, and be successful, and make better choices, and and on and on it goes. And you look at that book, The Secret, that came out in 2006. That was a big deal. It's Oprah put it up there. That was huge. The big push on, like 60 million copies sold. Like, it was crazy. You know what? And, and I'm sure you remember that. Maybe there are some who are still here trying to positive think yourself into millions of dollars. And that's fine. If that's, you know, what you want to do. That's a joke. I, I don't have anything against positive thinking at all. I'm all for it. For the right reasons. But accumulating wealth is not why we are here. And I think that's an important distinction to make in all of this. Changing the way we think to better our lives is great. But the overall purpose should and always be fulfilling God's will for our lives and growing the kingdom of God. What I love about all of these is not, these are not new ideas. Everybody wants to stand up and say, oh, that's my new idea. You know, let's think positive and change our lives. These are not groundbreaking ideas. Jesus Christ to put it all in here for you. You just have to read it and practice it every day. You know what I really get tired about is reading about people who are successful. You know, and I'm not, I don't mean to say successful like it's a dirty word or anything like that. But you read about people who are like really, really successful in a way that the world denotes success, whether it's they are professional athletes or they've built, uh, you know, an empire or a business or a music label or whatever it is. And you read about their life and the things that they have done to achieve it and the amount that they have had to sacrifice and that they have had to go without sleep and they have had to go and sacrifice relationships and, and money and time and they have had to work uh, I, tirelessly, and I've read article upon article about successful people that don't have any time for social media. They don't waste their time on TV or movies or any of that mindless entertainment because they're too busy chasing their goals. With all their being, they chase after that. And at the end of the day, we have a heavenly, eternal goal. And I wonder, how are we conducting ourselves today? How are we chasing after the will of God in our lives tonight? Is there any sacrifice? Do I want to be used of God so much that I'll put that phone away or fast social media or media entirely for a month or a week or a day? What are we doing? Does it not bother you? And I mean, we, there, are, there are people out there that money is not even the goal anymore because they've got so much money it doesn't even matter, you know. Jeff Bezos isn't hopping out of bed Monday morning because he's got to make that mortgage payment. That's the Amazon guy, just in case anybody didn't know. His goals are so far beyond that, but he's still getting up every day, he's still grinding, and his goal is temporal. Their goals are going to be nothing. They're going to waste away. It's not going to mean anything, but we have a goal that is eternal, that is going to make eternal difference. Do we love Him today with all of our mind, heart, soul, and strength? Because it starts in your head. It starts in the mind. What is directing those thoughts today? Your mind, Wikipedia says, is a set of cognitive faculties, including your consciousness, imagination, perception, thinking, judgment, language, and memory that is housed in the brain. It is usually defined as the faculty of an entity's thoughts and consciousness. It holds the power of imagination, recognition, and appreciation, and is responsible for processing feelings and emotions resulting in attitudes and actions. The things that you think affect the things that you do. So how powerful is that mind? The mind that God gave you, the mind that God created and put in there. How we perceive ourselves and the world around us can have a real impact on our physical being. It's not just our perception 
that change is measurable. Objective characteristics of our body and mind can change significantly within a short time if we persuade ourselves that we are actually younger than our physical age. Don't believe me, just wait. This is, uh, this is so cool. This is science just trying to catch up to God. <clears throat> you read about this, there's a, a, a study that they did in 1979. This is really neat. In the experiment designed to test the power of perception, they took a group of 75-year-old men to spend a week in a setting where everything, pictures, newspapers, books, photos, magazines, was from the 1950s. I'd go there. The researcher explained to the men that they were to act, talk, and behave as if they were actually living in 1959, a time when they would have been in their mid-50s. Everything was arranged to make them see the world as if they were 55 and not 75. They were even given ID badges with old pictures of themselves. They were told to have conversations about things that happened at the time, their old jobs, old relationships, everything. The point of the experiment was to show that our mental construction, the way that we perceive ourselves, has a direct impact on our physical being. Of course, the conscious minds of the men were fully aware that they were still in the year 1979. Nothing supernatural or time travel or anything like that was at play. But their subconscious perception made the difference. So what did the experiment show? Before the experiment, the men were tested on characteristics that normally go downhill. Physical strength, eyesight, short-term memory. When the men were tested after the experiment, most of them had improved in every category. They were stronger, they were more flexible, and their eyesight and short-term memory had improved. So just think of the possibilities that that offers. If you can reverse the aging process through sheer mind power, imagine what other personal characteristics you can change by changing your perception of yourself. Personal traits such as confidence and appearance is something you can influence through mental construction. So what if we as the church could start to see ourselves the way that God sees us tonight? What if as a group we started to just believe the things that God tells us about ourselves in his word? That you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What if our young people woke up every day and the first thought that went through their mind was that I can do all things uh, through Christ which strengthens me today. What if we walk through the doors of our workplaces uh, and our schools and instead of worrying about where do I fit, uh, where do I belong, am I accepted or am I getting ahead, I walked through those doors and I thought I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus today. What if we changed how we thought today? We've got to change our minds. God has given us everything that we need Today, to be powerful for the kingdom of God. But we have got to use what He has given us and stop filling our minds with the junk and the thinking of this world. Let me ask you this today, and you don't have to raise your hand, please don't. But are you struggling today? Are you not where you want to be today? Are you worried? Are you afraid? Are you unsure? Let me ask you this. What's your thought life like? What do you dwell on? What burdens you? What do you fill your mind with day to day? Because that affects our thoughts, which affects our actions. I was reading an article that said mind power is one of the strongest and most useful powers that you possess. The power consists of your thoughts. The thoughts that pass through your mind are responsible for everything that happens in your life. Your predominant thoughts influence your behavior and attitude and control and actions and reactions, and it ends like this. It says, as your thoughts are, so is your life. We read in Proverbs chapter 23, it says, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's important to understand the context here. I'll read a different version. It says, don't accept an invitation to eat at a selfish person's food, no matter how good it is. People like that take note of how much you eat. They say, take all you want, but they don't mean it. If we go back further, it helps to understand Proverbs is a compilation of a wise advice, like from father to son. It says, when you are invited to eat with a king, use your best manners. Don't go and stuff yourself. That would be the same as cutting your own throat. Don't be greedy for all that fancy food. It may not be so tasty. Give an eagle suddenly taking off. Don't accept an invitation to eat 
A selfish person's food, no matter how good it is. So it is advice on greed, on manners, on human nature, but that specific passage, for as the thoughts of his heart are, so is he, means that a person's true nature isn't always visible. Sometimes they appear generous on the outside, but they are really selfish and greedy on the inside. So if you want to change something in your life today, it starts in your mind. The thoughts of a person that you can't see, that will always be the true nature. So we see how our thoughts can be important. What goes on in our heads and in our hearts is not and cannot be separated or compartmentalized from our life in Jesus Christ. It is all or it is nothing. But let's be honest, we don't always believe that, do we? Sometimes we are 100% putting on a show. Sometimes we keep parts of our mind and our heart away from God hidden just out of reach. And there are lots of reasons that we might do this. Fear. Fear is one. Fear of not being in control. Doubt is another. Doubt that if I really did let go, if I really did place my future, my finances, in the hands of an invisible God, do we really believe that we're going to be all right? The Bible talks about people being given over to vile affections, and it's more than just a specific instance in Romans that it talks about, that principle is true for anything in that when we allow other things to become the things that we are most passionate about above God and the things of God and the will of God in our lives, then He will allow those things to take up residence in your life and in your mind. God is not going to fight for real estate in your mind and in your heart. You either give it to Him or you give it to something else. Empty space does not stay empty for long. Things will take up residence in your life and mind. Maybe thoughts and ideas that you didn't even realize were being formed that will influence actions that you didn't even realize you would do. How many times after we have made an error or made a mistake do we think, why did I do that? How did I get here? It's not an accident. We have to guard our minds. So we have to be very careful about what we give priority in our life, with our time, with our attention. The things that we allow to occupy our thoughts and entertain our minds. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Proverbs 27 says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. People get into situations And if they were being honest with themselves, they would have never gotten there in the first place. Shouldn't have been there. Shouldn't have been with that person. Shouldn't have been with that group. I knew it, but I didn't stop myself. Be on the lookout for the enemy. Be on the lookout for the traps. Be careful of what you think. Thoughts are like a video that plays on the screen of your mind. What you play there determines the kind of life that you live and the experiences you meet. To make changes in your life, you've got to play a different video Romans 8 says, for to be carnally minded, verse 6, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It'll separate you from your Savior. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Your thoughts influence your life, but you have a choice tonight. The Bible tells us that we have a choice to be carnally minded, to be only concerned with this world and our lives in it, only with the temporal, here and now. You can gain wealth and success, even perceived happiness in this life. People lead successful lives all the time using the power of their thoughts and hard work and dedication. They use the tools that God gave all of us, but to what end? The end is death. There is no eternal value in that life, and there is no joy. But if we are spiritually minded, if we set our thoughts on focus on the things that are above, on the things if we pursue success in the kingdom of God and in our relationship with Jesus Christ with our whole heart and our mind and a willingness to sacrifice to make ourselves available for His good work, then we're going to have life and we're going to have peace everlasting. How can we fix our thoughts? How can we set our mind on things above? Is there a self-help book? Is there a podcast? Is there something? It's all here. It's all here, church. This is the best help that you're ever going to get. Not to say we shouldn't always be reading and growing and increasing our knowledge, but this is the source. Everyone else is just trying to catch up. 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and this is it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. In His Word, God gives us the ruler by which we are to measure our thoughts. And I think there are a lot of days that it would be tough to meet if we're honest with ourselves. If I were to ask myself at the end of my day, did I focus today on things that were true? Was it honest? Was it just? Was it pure? Was it lovely? Did, was it all things of a good report? God, was there any virtue in my thoughts? Was there any praise today? Or did I allow my thoughts to wander? Did it get caught up in the things of life that may or may not have been true or honest? Maybe there's something real, real exciting happening on Facebook today and we just get there and just waiting for the comments to come rolling in because that's exciting. I believe in this busy world we live in where we have more distractions and more opportunities to be distracted than ever before. We are bombarded with so much information from all sides. We don't even realize that sometimes we allow hours and hours of time to go by while we are immersed in mainstream media and points of view and thoughts that are secular, though maybe not sinful, promote thoughts that are not going to help you in your walk with God. We can inadvertently be feeding that carnal mind. I'm sorry, this is coming across really hard, a lot harder than I meant it to. <clears throat> I just feel like we need a renewal today. You know, I, I know I feel like I do. I, if we do not discipline our thoughts, we will be swept away by the things of this life. You know, am, am I saying you shouldn't know what's going on in your world and current events and what's happening? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we should ignore the state of our world or live in a bubble. What I'm saying is are we giving the same time and attention to the Word of God and to His presence in our lives as all the other stuff that we're allowing to shape our thoughts and our intentions and our thinking and the thinking of our children. Romans 12 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wants to renew your mind tonight. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. John Piper said this. He said, we are perfectly useless as Christ's exalting Christians if all we do is conform to the world around us. We have to do more than conform. We have to allow ourselves to be transformed more than just externally on the outside. It needs to be internal in my mind. I need a transformation of the mind. God, renew my mind today. Transform my thinking today. We are transformed by the Spirit of God working in our lives. When we allow His Spirit to manifest in our lives and in our thoughts, that is the only time that true change can come. There are so many times that I have 100% put down my phone or close my laptop in absolute disgust after reading an article or a series of articles or even comments or, and just felt so discouraged and depressed about the world or maybe even myself and thought, God, is there any hope at all for this world? This world that I brought my boys into, what kind of future do they have in this world? And I realize when I read the Word of God and when I, I read this Scripture, I'm focusing on the wrong things. God says, don't, don't look at that. Don't, God says, don't look down. Look up, He says. He says, look up to me. The world is sick, yes, but I'm the cure. Don't focus on the sickness today. Focus on the cure. Don't spend time thinking about the dark. I want you to think about the light today. Focus on the light Step one is allowing His Spirit to transform my mind through the Holy Ghost. I have to desire that today. I have to allow Him into my life. But it doesn't stop there. Every day we fight. Every day we battle. Every day we live to continually surrender ourselves in this nature to Jesus Christ. And I have to guard my mind. I have to be on the watch. I can't give place to the enemy. I can't give Him any ground. Step two 
I find in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. I'm almost done if the music could come back. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Different versions says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. We don't enter thoughts, we don't entertain thoughts that don't honor the knowledge of God. We grab hold and we hold captive our own thoughts to the obedience of Jesus Christ. We do this because we by taking responsibility, church. We take responsibility for the things that we watch. We take responsibility for the things that we read. We take responsibility for the things that we allow in our minds. We do this by changing our behavior, not just externally, but also internally. Working on disciplining our mind to be holy, to be set apart. Paul urges us to take captive for every thought. Confront your disabling thoughts. Turn them over to God. Become who He knows you can be. It's going to take work to take your thoughts captive each time they pop into your mind. But it is possible tonight with the help of the Holy Ghost. Today as we continue to surrender daily to Him. Choose. Every day that you wake up, choose Jesus. We are to think about things that are true. Choose to think about things that are noble. Choose to think about things that are right, pure, lovely, and admirable. When we think about those things, God promises us peace today if we could stand. Finally, I want you to believe with me. I want you to believe with me that it is possible. It is possible. I know maybe this whole time someone's been thinking, I can't control my thoughts. They just come and they just go and they're just there. Sure, it's not easy. But if you're struggling with thoughts, I want you to understand that those thoughts are coming from some place. That's coming from somewhere. If you were, remember when you were a kid and you read a scary story or, or watched something scary and that's all you could think about, it's all you could think about. Well, you, that came from somewhere. That started somewhere. That didn't come out of nowhere. And the things that we struggle with in our mind, they're not coming from nowhere. It's from somewhere that is getting inputted into our mind and our subconscious we are to think about the things that are true noble right pure lovely and admirable it is not easy to retrain your thoughts but as God empowers you to focus your mind on the right things it will become easier you can develop a new frame of reference you can look at things through God's eyes Based on things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. It is possible to live a life aware of our thoughts, and taking them captive. God gave us His Holy Spirit to empower us. We just have to do it. We just have to do it. I was reading an article the other day that talked about habits and how people form habits. And how that the human brain has the ability to rewire itself with enough dedication, with enough time, with enough effort, your brain can rewire itself to make anything a habit. Almost like God put it in there so that you could change. So that you could change. So you don't have to be the same way you are right now forever. God gave you the tools that you needed to be everything that He needs you to be. I want to open this altar tonight, and I don't know where you're at tonight. But if your mind is in a battle, I encourage you to come and to surrender to Jesus tonight. And allow His Spirit to transform your mind tonight. You don't have to leave here like you came. That's the most wonderful thing about serving Jesus. is You don't have to stay the same. You walked in those doors one way. You don't have to walk out the doors the same way. In the same fight, in the same battle. You can leave here changed tonight. If the Spirit of God is here, lives can be changed. Minds can be transformed. And you don't have to start tomorrow with the same mentality or the same thoughts that you had last week. This can be a new day. This can be a fresh start if you're just willing to give God a chance tonight. Amen. This altar is open. I, I encourage you to come tonight.
pray that God would speak to your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God.